Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hi, Evelina. Good to see you. Um, this is Evelina Jose Luis, and I'm Javi Moreno, and this is Latino Theater Company Live. We're all practicing social distancing, social distancing, even if we're in the same home. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today, I want to welcome you all to especially, um, the copy, especially during an argument. Yeah, it's really good to say, hey, social distancing, please. <laughs> Come back in, in six minutes or six feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is um, our conversations um, surrounding the, uh, uh, the topics of our archival screenings or um, our upcoming readings of plays that. Uh, we were supposed to produce uh, this year at the fall at our theater. Uh, this month, Tuesday, we premiered um, the archival screening of La Victima, and that goes all the way, I don't have it here, all the way until September 27th. And tomorrow, we are featuring a new play by Evelina Fernandez, Sleep with the Angels, and that is going to run on demand for 10 uh, 10 days. Uh, you can watch that on our website, the latc.org uh, forward slash live or on our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Latino Theater Company. Uh, yeah, Sleep with the Angels is going to be running for 10 days. You can catch that. Next week, we have uh, the archival screening, The Home by Nancy Ma, directed by Jeffrey Rivas, a company member of the Latino Theater Company, and then also uh, a reading of Just Like Us by Karen Zacarias, directed by Fidel Gomez. That's currently in rehearsal um, and going to be recording. But today's topic is Sleep with the Angels, a new play um, that Evelina Fernandez has written, directed by Jose Luis. Uh, and it was supposed to premiere so, around this time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it was supposed to probably time. be in rehearsals. Evelina, what was, um, when did you start this project? Um, oh, um, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, I, I had a commission from a theater, um, other than our theater. And, um, uh, I wrote this as a commission for, for that theater. And then, mm. yeah. And, um, that's kind of happened with a couple of my plays where I, I start them out as a commission and then we end up doing them at our theater. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, so it's been, it's been maybe five years that I started working wow. on it off and on. Um, I was inspired by the fact that, uh, my daughter Esperanza, uh, was, a she was a personal assistant to a family. And, um, well, she's, she's an actress and, you know, a really good actress, but, you know, side gig. So <laughs> yeah, side gig. At, that, at that time, she um, was a personal assistant for a family. And um, sh so sh um, she started um, um, watching this, this young boy um, grow up and, um, and he was gender um, ambiguous. So ambiguous oh. ambiguous in terms of like you know what his gender was going to be and so she kind of mm. like they had some deep conversations as like nanny and child and wow yeah and so she would tell me about them and i always thought it was really interesting now the difference is that in our play it, it's a it's a latinx family and and um but in reality uh, she was working for a Jewish family, a Jewish American family. So the little boy was Jewish, but he spoke perfect Spanish wow. because he had grown up with, you know, nannies that spoke Spanish. So he spoke perfect Spanish, loved the Mexican culture. In fact, when he had his bar mitzvah, he had mariachis, <laughs> and had, you know, a taco truck. And wow tequila on every table so he was was really um you know enamored of the mexican culture so yeah that was a really a beautiful thing about um that little boy too so that was wow. kind of the inspiration of it yeah. and then the other part of it is i always 
I always wanted to write kind of like a magical nanny, mm -hmm. but Mexican, kind of like a Mexican Mary Poppins kind of character. Right. You know, but using <laughs> but using Mexican magic. In other words, you know the the kind of um, match. It's not magic, but um, uh, like what curanderas do. Right. How they get us, you know, certain the things. Santos that yeah, the Santo, you know, um, tying the the Santo to the to the <laughs> leg of a shit of a chair, and you know those kinds of things that you know are part of our day to day life as Chicanos and Mexicanos, you know, and um, that you know we we all believe in, and and it's just you know part of of, of who we are, and so I always wanted to write a character like that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I. Yeah, kind of and it's sort of, sort of um, like an Angel de la Guardia, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a, uh, she's, you know, she believes, and um, so you know the way she arrives is it to this home is kind of magical, and the way she, you know, just travels is kind of magical, and. Um, so, um, and, and also I wanted to explore the fact that there's so many women that from other countries, not just Mexico, but also Central America and Latin America and, um, that leave their <laughs> families behind and come yeah. to the United States and raise other people's families. Oh, right? yeah. And what is that like to be a mother to somebody else's children when you have your own children and somebody right. else is having to take care of your children, you yeah. know, because you're not there. So it's kind of like this cycle that goes around for women, you know, yeah. for women around the world, you know, because right. ultimately, I mean, un unless you have a very enlightened or progressive compañero, you know, uh, the majority of women are in charge of, you know, raising the children and yeah. and, the, and the family. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, I've been thinking a lot about that right now with COVID and just like, you know, I mean, those, those mothers, especially like here in LA, right. Or around the world, they have to be, you know, go from home to home. Some stay, some don't, but they're also, they're leaving their children who probably are home, have to be home because of school. Mm -hmm. Um, so they can't, I mean, so I remember, I, I tell this a lot to a lot of people, like growing up in East LA, it's like, we become adults really quick because we're taking care of our younger sibling. And it's, there's mm -hmm. that care, right? There's that care um, system that we're developing, but you see them traveling, you know, um, if you 2 a.m. or if it's like 5 a.m. in the morning, you look at the buses uh, or the bus stops and you see like everybody, you go to Pasadena and you start seeing. And it's, I, I, I like that you touched on, on that, on, on the travel, it's very magical, right? Whether it's on the, what is it, the Bestia, uh, right. coming from Central America, or it's also, you know, magically how um, crossing the border and how uh, uh, getting into the United States um, what, uh, so, and this, go ahead. No. And I was going to say that, um, you know, at this time, I feel like it's an important story because of what's ha happening in, you know, in our country and, you know, the demonization of immigrant workers and the demonization of, you know, people who, um, are trying to, um, seek, um, Asylum in this asylum, country, yeah, you know, and, and the separation of children, right? Yeah, and, and and the whole thing about people saying, "Oh, well, these people, you know, they're just saying that, you know, it's dangerous where they come from." But I'm like, who wants to leave their land? I right. mean, who really wants to just up and move? I don't think anybody wants to just up and you know move to another land. You, you yeah. do it because you need to, right? Because there's a reason, because, um, for example, you know, um, many middle-class or upper-class upper families in Mexico, they're not coming over here. Right. <laughs> they're good. They're good yeah. in Mexico, you know, but it's, you know, the poor, the hard, you know, poor working 
people that are coming from Mexico and then what are the jobs they get here? You know, now they're the essential workers in this pandemic, right. you know, so consequent, it, consequently, these are all the people who have to go to work, you know, don't have the privilege of locking down. So they have to go to work. And so what happens consequently, they're out in the world. Consequently, the, the cases of COVID in East LA, you know, in Montebello, in Pico Rivera, you know, they're, they're huge. The yeah. cases are, I mean, the numbers are huge in those communities. And, and of course, other communities of color, yeah. you know, because these are the people who, um, who do the essential jobs, right? Right. And I think it's interesting and, and folks will be able to see that um, uh, starting tomorrow um, at seven o'clock here on these channels. But um, it's, um, it's a Latinx family that she's working for. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's really interesting. I mean, I, I play one of the characters, but what's, um, they're both, uh, <laughs> they're both uh, lawyers, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, so it's just interesting because it's a lot of times, you know, it's like, it's, it's, they're both working right they're both latinx but they're also it's 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 a um their nanny is a immigrant and it's probably you know it's it's one of the things as reading the play and hearing the play as we were rehearsing to and doing it um last year at our reading series was just you know it's like it's it's never really these topics are never really touched it's usually a white family hiring a an immigrant nanny and but it's also like within that Latinx family is like the culture is being sort of lost a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the language. Um, um, so it's, I, I think that's one of the cool things as we're seeing like throughout these, these archival, um, like the different eras of these plays, right? This is sort of set in modern time. Mm -hmm. the uh, yeah, present day. Pre present day. A uh, pre, uh, before pre COVID. Yeah. <laughs> pre -COVID. This, yeah. This, this play also um, has uh, musics, muse songs, right? Original songs are in the play. Yeah. Or they're. Yeah, they're original songs. Um, I wrote the lyrics, and then uh, Robert Raval and Esperanza America, my daughter and my son-in-law, um, wrote wrote the music, and you know the, and you know turned them into um, these beautiful songs. Yeah, I like writing lyrics. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's really fun. Um, I don't, I haven't done it too much in the play. So San Luis is always saying you have to write original no music because what happens is it's a complication when right. you know use music that's already written and you know we have to you know uh, license of rights and get the licensing and all that stuff. So. Um, yeah, I thought I'd take a crack at writing lyrics, and I had written some. Um, I had worked on a on a musical before, but I had mm. forgotten how much fun it was. Yeah, to to uh, write lyrics. Yeah. That's. Do, do you think that um, there's anything different or unique that that this play touches on that you hadn't explored in any of your previous work? Um. Well. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the young man is, I mean, I have, you know, explored, um, you know, a gay character in um, dementia, but this is a child, and this is a, a child in search of his gender identity, and I always feel like these are topics that may, may already have been approached in the American theater mm. about, about white families, but you know, um, we, we have a lot of work to do when it comes to um, um, telling these stories, you know, it, with the Latinx, in the Latinx community. Yeah. I mean, it's not like there is no gender fluid Latinx right. children, that, you know, <laughs> are, but, you know, we're, we're not writing their stories. So, um, so yeah, it, it, that's interesting. And I have a lot of work to do. I mean, you know, full disclosure, I have a lot of work to do on this play, you know, um, what the reading that people will see tomorrow is where we're at now, 
but you know, I intend to do much, much more work before right. the production goes up. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's something that we've talked about, for example, with like premeditation and solitude in our last conversation. I feel like I see you guys um, every week, <laughs> once a week uh, in a conversation. I know. I said, I said, why do I have to be on every conversation? <laughs> on every conversation. But one of the things is that we also talk about is, is in the rehearsal process is where you get to test these things out. You get to try. I mean, um, it's really difficult. Um, testing it out, you know, when we're rehearsing in this platform and 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 recording it, but in on stage as we get you you get to see it and you bring in new pages that works that didn't work and mm -hmm. um, that's some of the things that 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 will happen on stage. Well, so at least this was going to be uh, as we mentioned at the top scheduled to be sort of premiering around this time right now. Um, did you already have things in mind that there's music? But uh, so one of the things that we've been noticing with the plays. Um, La Victima, Solitude, Premeditation, La Olla. What are some of those elements, sneak peek elements that that um, you had in, in mind for, for Sleep with the Angels? Well, I think I think one of the one of the big big things that we had discussing, I have been discussing with Evelina is yes, in relationship to the script is to, to write many more songs. Mm. Right now it's only two songs, and it's like, you know, but I feel like the play is going to flourish more if we can get music, much more, much original music in it. Mm. Uh, from, from, maybe from every point of view, I'm not sure. But just the yeah. idea that to write original music for this, which is very, very different. I mean, uh, staging wise, it's a very challenging play in that way. Meaning we have to come up with some amazing design that allows to see the theatrical magic that's yeah. supposed to happen in the play. Man. How does she fly? Does she rig? Does she fly? Flies into the house? <laughs> is the house in disorder? How does it get in order? How is the store? You, you know what I mean? It's like a lot of it. How is the movement happening? What's the style of it? And in and, 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 and the, and the theatrical way, like, you know what I mean? All the plays, when you read them, may sound realistic. But when we put them in the big stages, then they have to get a style to it. That, you know, what is the, the, the physical language of what happened uh, in this play? But I think it's, it, I mean, the other thing that I'm very interested in, and, and you kind of pick on it, we haven't had this couple, we mm -hmm. haven't had this family, this Latinx family who are so ambitious to be part of the mainstream and mm -hmm. how politically they vacillate into West right with their heart mm. and with right with the law. They happen to be lawyers. They have to make the right decision. I mean, that has to be explored because to me, that's that's an interesting thing, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's the, the oldest story, is, it's, it's about, you know, I, I'm, I'm your father, but I'm a, a, a policeman, and you steal something, and I have to judge you. What do I do? I mean, as a father, I want to protect. Right. As a policeman, do I obey my country and my law? You know, I think in those two characters, I think that's the very interesting. Can we haven't really explored that type of of, of thing about law and and family? Law and roots and culture, law right. and who we, where we come from, and that that very intimate relationship that happens, and that we have to go again. I mean, I think that's really what I discovered by listening to it. Is that the devastation should be, because because the idea is that I mean, the play is about the mother, but the play is about the mother. I think. Uh, that's the character because it, she's the one that changes the most. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But but I think the crisis is that dilemma of having to let her go, even though she knows she's wrong morally. Mm. But she's a lawyer, and she has to uphold the law, what she thinks is the law. Uh, you know what I mean? I think that is something in there that I'm fascinated by it, just by the contradiction of what happened. And because how do we know? Yeah. Parents of this couple could have come from Mexico and been immigrants. Right. I mean, we're, yeah. we're, 
you know, where her parents were her parents immigrants? Do they spoke Spanish? And right. she didn't, you know, because it's a part which she said, I want to make my family proud. I want my parents to be proud of me, you know. But but I think that thing had more to explore to it because I think that is the devastation of the story. The idea that she you know she's a mother trying to raise her daughter and, 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 and Juana in, in, in Mexico and, and this uh -huh. is a Bible and she's a mother trying to raise her children alone and she has to turn her back and these other women. I mean, I think that's part of meaning all the work that we need to do. And we, as you know, we yeah. we always, Evelina writes characters that are middle class. Most of her lead roles of the main characters are always belong to American mainstream, which I think is great because that story we don't hear that often. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. The story that you are a successful lawyer, you are a successful professor, you know, you, right. you know, like, you know, that's very important. And, 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 and the type of work that the Latino theater company does, because we're not against any other stories. This is the stories that we explore as Chicanos or Mexican Americans, you know, and I think that's important, but that's complex and it's getting yeah. more complex. It's getting right. more complex because our, our own community, I mean, we have a mayor who's Latino, who's Mexican, we had the last mayor was Mexican, we are gonna have a governor who's Mexican, and, and all of this creates complexity because how do you work with your community and at the same time uphold a law in a system yeah. that is already racist? Right. You know, that's really because it, Yeah, because it's also like kind of like what I was thinking is like, Okay, they're both, you know, they're Latinx or Chicanos, but it's also like, what gets you wanting to go into law? It's probably, oh, you probably have an organizing background or mm -hmm. this, but it's also like, even, you know, and, and folks will be able to see that um, it, it's um, as, as uh, in tomorrow's reading, you can watch it anytime. We talked about this, Jose Luis, um, in our conversation about two weeks ago um, and how you were seeing, um, like in these coming weeks, we saw that with with she, uh, a new playwright. We're seeing that um, uh, we're seeing with just like us, Fidel, who directed uh, Danny in the Deep Blue Sea. But with this play, you we got to work with young actors um, and then a, a new generation, right? Like uh, I mean, I I played a father <laughs> um, to teenagers. It's the next generation of the Latino theater. We talked a little bit about that. So it, how was that process like, uh, or or even doing that? I'm fascinated by. It. I think it's, <laughs> I really, really, I'm really. I was talking to I'm a friend of mine in New York today, and I was saying because he's been looking at everything, and I say, you know, what's interesting, what's coming is really guided by a young generation of people. Because if you see a particular in this reading, it's young people that is driven by the characters are young people, the parents are young, they're not, it's a whole new generation, the actors are young. I mean, Lucy and, and Saul are in the company, but they're not necessarily playing the lead roles, which is right. kind of great. You know, uh, even when you see the mother of Henry, it's the new generation. Right, the, which is that's the other one. Yeah, the Mexican trilogy, even the entire company is seen it. They're not playing the lead roles. The young people are playing the lead roles. And I, I, I think it's exciting. I mean, yes, by looking at everything, how it accumulates, I'm very excited about that. I think it's, it's so, uh, uh, we did it without, this was not like, Okay, you guys, let's get the young people over here. I mean, this is just is the own evolution of the company organically. Right. And, and it's I'm fascinated by it. I'm really fascinated by it. Uh and, and relationship, how it's, it feels different. Of course, it feels very different. I mean, and it's interesting, even from doing doing the last angry brown hat with the four actors, you know. Yeah. I worked for many years. In, I mean, yeah, it was like veteran actors. I mean, it was really cool to see. Like there and, you know, to do all of the reading with young actors, you mm -hmm. know? It's, it's, I mean, we 
And we talked about we talked about uh, yesterday. We, you know, we saw La Victima 2010. Last year, we were able to do La Victima with uh, both East LA College and UCLA. Um, and I remember. I mean, it's clear, Mom. I remember that production. So even watching it, it was you know watching Lupe, and I was like, oh, I just saw you know Josia, who's an intern with us, right? She played that yeah. role. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, wow, that's yeah. really cool to just see, you know, just the. the exposition of that it was was really cool and as you mentioned yeah we'll see it with the mother henry um it's just really cool to, to just see you know just like the different characters you probably have never seen and it's really cool if, um well, to it, see it's, it's kind of the evolution of the of the latino theater company right i mean i think right. we've been creating together for 35 years but in order to continue telling the stories you know we have to bring in other people we have you know, a, an artistic family, people who right. worked with, you know, in, in several different uh, productions. And, you know, it's not, I, I, you know, it's not like the Latino theater company, like, you know, we're being sent out to pasture or anything. It's just <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, we, if, if, if we're going to play leads in a play, well, I'm going to have to write a play about, you know, older people. And those are the, <laughs> those are the roles those that are gonna be the roles. We, can, we can play now. But um, yeah, so I, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's lovely and it's wonderful to, you know, be working with younger actors and, you know, we were all young actors at, at one, at one point, you know, and hopefully uh, we can hand down the, the, you know, the aesthetic the the way that we work you know the passion the the um commitment to social justice yeah that we've been working with for the last 30 some years you know yeah. with younger people yeah it's really cool because we were just talking about that yesterday with la victima right teatro la esperanza latino mm -hmm. theater Com the the lab um um Latino theater company and then you know the next generation you know let's mm -hmm. hope it's it's not um um online <laughs> let's hope it, it it goes back to on stage um and Alina, so yeah. this is a reading yeah. <laughs> right this is a reading is is there um um uh questions uh or if if people have you know things that they saw noticed and and wanted to give i don't know what it would be you know q and a uh because this is we're used, we usually do, you know, Q and A at the end of a reading, but this one's before, um, where they can send that to you if they or type it up in the comments um, yeah, after sure. they see the reading. Yeah, any comments, any questions, any constructive criticism, be kind. I do have <laughs> feelings, um, but yeah, I mean, especially from the from the trans community, you mm, know, yeah. I would like you know to, and that I I feel like that is. Well, where the most of the work that I need to do has to be done, you know, in terms of like really, you know, getting into the deepness of that character, yeah. that that twelve-year-old boy. Yeah. Well, so thank, I, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Remember, <laughs> it's a reading. It's a sneak peek. You you're gonna see the script in where it is now, knowing that it's going to be. Um, changing over the next few months. Thank you. Uh, Louis, Louis, I see your comment. <laughs> Thank you. And also, and also, um, uh, please, um, everybody, uh, send me your comments about the play. I, I would, you know, I, I love con constructive criticism, but don't be mean. <laughs> yeah, don't be mean. You can actually, um, you can actually, if you visit Evelina's website, evelinafernandez.com, she has a contact me uh, yeah. page. Do you, uh, <laughs> that, you know, direct, you don't have to email, but she'll get those um, uh, comments yeah, or, or even. Yeah. Or just, or you Facebook know, page. Or, yeah, my Facebook page or even at Evelina at the LATC. What right. is it? Evelina. Yeah, Evelina at the LATC.org. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank I you so much. Comments. 
watch watch the reading and then send me your comments yes you have a tomorrow it premieres at 7 p.m right here on youtube.com forward slash latino theater company and also our facebook pages the latino theater company and the los angeles theater center once it premieres you have nine days after that to really watch it at any time um you know pause it come back and watch it we've heard some wonderful things about our play she that's still running um people were you know putting it on their phones and just put some earphones on and listen to the play and then also this is a man's world uh gets removed tonight at 11 59 so you have a couple hours to watch that this is a man's mm -hmm. world written uh and performed by sal lopez directed by jose Luis valenzuela you can watch it anytime um uh, until tonight and you can watch all those other programs programs. Thank you so much. And we hope you get to watch tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Evelina and Hercules. Bye. Bye.